Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm not a boxing trainer. This is just the perspective from the bleacher seats, right? In fact, it's not even the bleacher seats. Uh, it's a perspective from someone in the bar watching the fight on pay-per-view, right? I've made an earlier video uh, about Manny Pacquiao's uh, weaknesses. I believe I called it How to Beat Pacquiao. There is another side of the coin. You need to be aware of it, right? I like to bet on boxing, and Floyd Mayweather does have some flaws, some flaws that, quite frankly, work against him when it comes to scoring a fight. Understand, even people I follow who believe that Mayweather is going to win, for example, Shelley Finkel, you need to Google him. Right, big player in boxing behind the scenes, believes that this fight is going to be competitive. In other words, a lot of the Floyd people, a lot of the people backing Floyd in this fight, believe that the fight's going to have ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Right, that's why Mayweather's only a minus 200 in Las Vegas. He's not an overwhelming favorite. Obviously, there is some cause for concern. Obviously, there are things that people believe Manny Pacquiao can exploit. Now, let me say this. Don't be fooled by Pacquiao's pleasant disposition. This guy is a warrior. He's one of the toughest men in boxing. He was on a fight card once where a fighter got badly hurt in the ring. I believe the guy ended up dying later. They came to Manny Pacquiao and said, hey, do you want to go forward with your fight? This is right after a guy had been badly hurt in the ring. And Manny Pacquiao did. Right? Pacquiao is very tough. Right? He's a bad man. The fact that he, you know, is very religious and is very pleasant and connects with the crowds shouldn't confuse you about his level of toughness. This guy is very tough. Understand, too, Mayweather has spent his life fighting in his country, the United States, right? His professional career. Most of his fights are from Las Vegas. Understand the flip side of that is that Manny Pacquiao's Filipino, right? When you see Manny Pacquiao, he's on foreign soil. He's sometimes fighting very popular fighters on their home turf. We don't think about it because Pacquiao is that mentally tough. Understand, when he fought Oscar De La Hoya in a fight in which I took De La Hoya, he's on his front foot against the bigger man. Right? He didn't concede anything in that fight. He's not hesitant. He's not fearful of Oscar's power. So we know Pacquiao's going to come in the ring and he's going to be tough. No question about it. Now let's talk about Floyd's flaws. Right? Things that I believe Manny Pacquiao might be able to benefit from. The first, and I know it might not be apparent, but it matters. Especially if this fight goes to the scorecards. Especially in how... This fight is perceived by the judges and the crowd and by us at home. The first is that, as Will Chamberlain famously said, no one roots for Goliath. You know, Floyd Mayweather is best playing the role of David, isn't he? Think about his fights, right? He fights the champ, Hinaro Hernandez. Floyd was a youngster at the time early 20s, right? That's Floyd at his best, where you're looking at Floyd and you're saying, wow, is he ready for this vet, right? When the field is level or when Floyd is viewed as David, then we empathize with him. Then we root for him and we notice the brilliance more. 
Think about some of his other fights. Big, bad, unbeaten Diego Corrales, KO puncher, physically bigger than Floyd. Right? We could root for Floyd in that fight. Right? The question was, hey, can Floyd stand up to Diego Corrales' power? The answer turned out to be that Diego Corrales couldn't stand up to Floyd's power. Think about Floyd recently in some of his fights. Right? Bigger fighters. Guys who are physically heavier. Canelo. Marcus Maidana. Oscar De La Hoya. Right? In those fights, Floyd's the smaller man. He's the little guy. Right? We then see a little guy standing up to the bigger guy, having superior skills than the bigger guy, keeping the bigger guy off of him. Right? That's when we cheer for Floyd. Now, this fight is going to have a very different dynamic. I don't think the crowd fully understands how much physically bigger than Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather is. Right? Floyd's going to come in the ring. He's going to be physically bigger. This is not the Oscar De La Hoya fight for Mayweather. This is not the Marcus Maidana fight. If they show you the weights of the guys on fight night, you're not going to see Floyd fighting a guy who weighs in the 160s. Right? The view is going to be that Floyd's the bigger man and he's the favorite. He's going to be Goliath in this fight. I'm telling you that America loves to root for underdogs. I'm telling you that if there's going to be a sympathy play in this fight, it's going to be for Manny Pacquiao. As I've said in an earlier video, I believe Pacquiao enters the ring a round and a half ahead of Floyd. Right? Understand, too, Pacquiao to me has the higher emotional quotient, right? We talk about IQ. I'll concede, in my opinion, Floyd's a smarter guy, IQ-wise. I know it's controversial. These are controversial videos. I'm a gambler. In terms of EQ, it's not close. Right? Manny's the guy you want to invite to your house party. Manny's the guy you want to have a beer with. Right? If a reporter shows up at Manny's house... You get the feeling Manny's going to talk about the fight more than his cars, right? You get the feeling Manny's not silly enough in a fight where they're trying to charge you $99 for the high-definition pay-per-view, right? They want you to make a decision to pay $99 to watch this on pay-per-view. Manny's not silly enough, and that's the word, silly. Manny's not silly enough when asked about domestic violence problems to say only God can judge me right let's be clear here anyone who's considering buying the fight is making a judgment on Floyd Mayweather right Mayweather to me he's a boxing genius who is disconnected on a deeply personal level right so Apart from the fact that no one roots for Goliath, which is a major flaw for Floyd, understand a photo finish, in my opinion, goes to Manny. Right? You know, in baseball they say a tie goes to the runner. Manny's the runner here. Right? Floyd's not as likable as Manny Pacquiao. He can't connect with the fans like Manny Pacquiao. Floyd's lived in a bubble. Let's be clear here. Manny is a man about town. Right? So, the first hole in Mayweather's game is I don't think he's going to be able to play David well here. He's not going to connect with the crowd. The second hole in his game, and by the way, I say this as someone who firmly believes Floyd wins the fight. I think Floyd has a chance at a knockout. My point, though, is see both sides. The second part of it is Floyd is really cautious at the beginning of fights, isn't he? That's the word, cautious. Right? He's beyond a slow starter at the start of fights, isn't he? He can lead once he gets comfortable. 
but early in fights, especially against guys with hand speed. Right? Not so much Canelo, but other guys. Floyd's going to be cautious early. He's a counterpuncher who likes to read what the other guy is doing. He likes to figure you out. So opponents, recently, Marcus Maidana, are able to come out, get the crowd on their side early. Right? Throw a lot of punches at Floyd. Hardly any of them land. But the crowd was happy to see the action. Happy to see the aggressiveness because they understood early in that fight the aggressiveness was not coming from Floyd Mayweather. Right? Now understand that's a huge hole in his game. Right? It's big, especially against a guy with hand speed like Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao can dial back his volume. He can actually be more selective. He's going to have more of an opportunity in the early rounds. I made an earlier video here saying Pac has to win the first round. Let's understand what you've heard about boxing. Boxing in theory is not boxing in reality. A round isn't a round. Nothing is what it seems. A round's not a round. If you come in and you win those early rounds and you pick up something boxing doesn't recognize which exists called momentum in other words if you convince the fans early that it's your night if you convince the judges early that it's your night Right? If you do so by looking good early, then that's going to carry over on the scorecards in the later rounds of the fight, isn't it? Those close rounds where we're going, oh, who, who won that round? You know, that guy looked good then, that other guy landed some punches there. Those rounds go to the guy who we feel is having the night. Right? I'm telling you, if you watch fights a second time, you're going to notice that's not what you think happened. Right? In real time, momentum will play tricks on your eyes. A guy looks flashy. A guy looks good in round one. Guy looks flashy. Guy looks good in round two. As you watch the fight live, you might say, oh, yeah, round three is his round. Round four is his round. Oh, dude's winning round five. You see the fight a second time, you're like, okay, I gave him rounds one and two, but round three could have gone either way. Round four could have gone either way. Round five could have gone either way. Right? My point is Floyd Mayweather gives away the very early rounds. Let me tell you how this plays out, how it has played out for some great fighters. Bernard Hopkins also likes to sleepwalk through the first couple of rounds of a fight. He's fighting Jermaine Taylor, who, unlike Manny Pacquiao, has a great jab. Right? Taylor comes out, doesn't really break up Hopkins. Hopkins isn't reeling around the ring or anything like that. It's just that Hopkins is doing next to nothing. Right? He's standing around, looking at the angles, trying to figure out, you know, Taylor's strategy on the night, trying to figure out what he could do. So while he's watching Jermaine Taylor, Jermaine Taylor just shoots a jab, is banking rounds. So when Hopkins starts fighting, an argument can be made, Hopkins wins, the, you know, let's say last eight rounds. You know, the last two-thirds of both fights, an argument can be made if that's all there were. Hopkins would have won both fights. Unfortunately, the fights are 12-round fights. Hopkins gives away the beginning. The fact that Hopkins solves the puzzle and then starts to dominate doesn't matter, right? By then, the crowd is conditioned. The judges are conditioned to check the box next to Jermaine Taylor's name on their scorecards, right? So Floyd is a slow starter. Manny Pacquiao is going to have an opportunity here. Right now, where I advising Pacquiao, I would tell him, don't just rush in and throw punches. Don't reveal your punch pattern. Be selective. You can be selective. Because Mayweather's not going to be doing too much early. 
right? So my advice to Manny Pacquiao is to try to hide his hands and to try to throw his best punch, a straight left, early in the fight before Floyd figures out the angles, right? If I were Manny Pacquiao in training camp, I'd be trying to remove any tell that I have from that straight left. I try to figure out how to throw it without the right hand in front of it. Right? Have no tells. Come in. If Pacquiao is able to land a left and badly shake Mayweather, if Mayweather hits the canvas and the first round is 10 8, in my opinion, Manny Pacquiao starts the second round up three and a half rounds. Another problem with Floyd is that he's too precise, too predictable. Put another way, if you're in a jazz. There's been a long time debate among people who love jazz, right? Are you an Ella Fitzgerald person? Precise, great tone, great timing. Or are you a Billie Holiday person? Sometimes that voice cracks. Sometimes she's off cadence. Sometimes she's really stretching the tone, isn't she? she. There's something exhilarating about that, isn't there? Right? I can tell you, you know, I'm a guy who my favorite singers, well, two of them anyway, are guys with gruffy voices, less than precise voices. Right? Teddy Pendergrass. You know, you got, you got, you got what I want. Right? Anthony Hamilton. Right? Little bit edgy. Little bit dodgy, right? There are times where, let's say, you know, a smooth singer, let's say Luther or Sinatra, isn't what you want. You want a little bit of messiness, don't you? Especially in boxing. The great Lennox Lewis talked about how when he fought, the guy who beat him, Haseem Rockman, in the second fight, now he came in and he just started wildly throwing some punches just to see which way Rockman would move his head, right? There was a method to the madness, but visually it was dazzling. You see Lennox Lewis, a big puncher already, you know, winding up and throwing big punches. You're a fan. You're like, oh man, Lewis is going for a knockout. This is even when Lewis is not trying to hit the guy. Right? You know, in other words, Lewis's game had a little bit of messiness, right, as part of the strategy. Floyd's game doesn't have any. In fact, Floyd's so precise that some fights are defined by single punches, aren't they? Right? Robert the Ghost Guerrero. That's a straight right hand fight, isn't it? Straight rights. Diego Corrales, who I mentioned earlier. That's a left hook fight, isn't it? The Ricky Hatton fight. Check left hook. Right? Floyd figures out. Floyd reads you. Floyd figures out your weakness and then he exploits that weakness. Sooner or later, isn't he going to meet a card player someplace? Maybe, maybe not. He only has one more fight in his career. But really, aren't there card players out there? who could theoretically lull Floyd into believing it's a straight right fight and then lead him into a trap. Hasn't happened. But all I'm saying is Mayweather is very predictable. Right? You, you see him thinking, you see him working, and then you see him doing the same thing time after time. Right? The ghost fight. He would hit Ghost with a straight right, then he'd get out of the pocket, he'd move away a little bit. Obviously, he's throwing other punches in there too, but you know he figured out what worked in that fight, right? The Marcus Maidana fight, Maidana has him over at the side of the ropes. Mayweather figures out exactly how to block the shots, leans off at the side, right? Maidana couldn't get anything in legally. He had to start to go low, right? 
you knew Mayweather on the side of the ropes was just going to cover up and let Maidana throw a lot of block punches for a while, right? Mayweather is so cautious that he pot shots you. He doesn't throw combinations. He's not Ray Leonard. He's not opening up, leaving himself vulnerable. He's just pot shotting you. In my opinion, he relies too much on the judges, doesn't he? Right? The judges are supposed to appreciate the clean counters. The judges are supposed to see them. I'm just here to tell you the judges don't always see clean shots. Just look at the body work done by Marvin Hagler against Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm not sure if the judges saw those punches. In Mayweather's mind, if he's technically more brilliant than you, and if he executes on his plan, then we the crowd are supposed to be dazzled. It's not always that way. Let's talk about another problem for Mayweather, right? He's a bit too defensive. I think defense is a great thing. I appreciate his work. Obviously, I'm picking him in this fight in part because of his defense. But understand, when he goes over to the ropes and he covers up and stuff, I believe a wise fighter should just stay in the middle of the ring. Why go over to the ropes? You know Mayweather wants you to throw a lot of punches so he can block them. You know Mayweather wants you to come over to the ropes like Ricky Hatton did so he could lay a trap for a check left hook. You know that. What would have happened if when Mayweather went over to the ropes against Ricky Hatton, Ricky Hatton just stood in the middle of the rope uh, of the ring, waved to Mayweather, said, come on, let's fight. Especially given that Ricky Hatton was more charismatic, more fan-friendly than Floyd Mayweather. Right? So all I'm saying is fighters have fallen into traps where they're following Mayweather around the ring. Do you have to? Let's talk about Mayweather's volume. He does land a lot of shots. His accuracy is mind-blowing. He is a master. But can we agree he doesn't have Leo Santa Cruz's volume? Can we agree that a Ray Leonard against Floyd could theoretically come in, throw a flurry of punches, back away, come back in, throw a flurry of punches, and already have thrown as many punches in the round as Floyd Mayweather's going to throw? Right? Doesn't Mayweather have a bit of a volume gap if he's fighting a savvy fighter with legs who could be a combination puncher? Right? Finally, Mayweather has had fights where the guy has been there for the KO. This is an underreported part of his game. Right? In my opinion, he could have KO'd Saul Alvarez. In my opinion, he could have KO'd Miguel Cotto. Right? But Mayweather has fragile hands. His hands have hurt him in the past. If you follow Mayweather fights, you're going to notice that there are some fights. I believe in the Canelo fight. He goes to his corner after a round where he's hitting Canelo like he's playing beach volleyball and Canelo's the ball. Right? He's opening up on Canelo who cannot match him in terms of hand speed. But he's unable to finish Canelo, and you see him wincing. He goes to his corner. His father looks at him, Floyd Sr., and his father says, Your hands. And the two men nod. I don't think the public fully understands how fragile Floyd's hands are. I believe Floyd is so accurate that there are fights where he knows that if he were to just step on the gas a little bit, he might be able to get his opponent out of there. But he doesn't step on the gas because of his hands, right? He's had hand problems. I'm telling you, hand problems in boxing are major, right? That's like a torn ACL in professional football, right? It'll take you out of the game. So with all of that said, my point to you is, yeah, does Pacquiao have a chance? He does. He's going to have to play on his charisma. He's going to have to play on the idea of Floyd being a slow starter and Pacquiao getting momentum. Right? He's going to have to play on the fact that he's naturally the higher volume guy than Floyd Mayweather. 
right? He's going to have to be smart and realize that there are times where Mayweather is going to be defensive and not throw a lot of punches. During those times, Pacquiao shouldn't jump in and have Mayweather look good defensively. Rather, Pacquiao should walk away. If Mayweather invites him over to the ropes, why go? If you feel in the middle of the ring, you can hold your own. Right? So make no mistake. I'm not saying there's a perfect fighter in this fight. Right? You show me a perfect fighter and I'll show you a guy who just hasn't fought the most challenging competition. Right? Great fighters lose. Prime Ray Robinson. Right? Prime Ray Robinson. Lost to Jake LaMotta. Understand, guys like Bernard Hopkins, guys like Juan Manuel Marquez, and we're talking about guys who belong in the Hall of Fame first ballot. Right? Both of those guys lost early in their careers. Right? I understand there are a few guys who were able to end their careers without a loss, officially. Right? I'm telling you, Lou Duva himself feels Rocky Marciano lost the first role in La Starza fight. Right? So, my point to you is simply, I do believe Floyd is an all-time great. I do think he's a great fighter, but he's going to be cautious. He's going to be defensive. He's not going to play or be able to play David in this fight. He's not going to be as likable as the other fighter, right? He's going to be trying to read Manny Pacquiao. If Pacquiao hides his best stuff, then comes in with it suddenly without previewing it for Floyd, and if that best stuff lands... Mayweather's going to have a very hard time on the scorecards, right? So, this fight does have challenges for Floyd Mayweather. It should be an interesting fight, right? Just understand, the coin has two sides here. Pacquiao is mentally tough. If he plays his cards right, he has a chance, right? Just understand that even the best have chinks in their armor, right? Understand that Thomas the Hitman Hearns, and I do believe for different reasons, that prime Hitman, the Hitman who faced Ray Leonard, would beat Floyd Mayweather. And let's be clear, the Hitman who fought Ray Leonard was beating Ray Leonard when he got stopped, right? Look at the scorecards, right? Just remember James Kitchen, I believe, not James Kitchen, I think it's Aran Barkley, beat Thomas the Hitman Hearns twice, right? Just understand Jermaine Taylor beat Bernard Hopkins twice. Great fighters can lose if their opponents have the right strategy, right? Floyd Mayweather has some holes, that Pacquiao could try to benefit from. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.